Today, brand manufacturers are looking to invest in omnichannel technologies to deliver new experiences in store. These rich interactions not only engage the shopper, but also provide a feedback loop that hasn't been available in retail for consumer goods companies. I'm Piers Fox, and today we walk through an interactive experience for pet food brand Purina with Trevor Sumner of technology solutions platform Perch. So I'm here today with Trevor Summer. He's the CEO of Perch. Uh, Perch make interactive displays that use computer vision to detect what shoppers are doing with shelves, with product. Uh, I'm excited to understand uh, the technology and the products that uh, Trevor's been rolling out to clients, and especially this case study with Purina. Purina have these product-aware displays that um, have been rolled out across 200 uh, Myers supermarkets. Uh, hey, Trevor, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. It's good to see you again, Piers. Nice to see you. It's always a pleasure. Uh, you, you are such a provocateur when it comes to kind of retail and retail technology. I'd love to kind of understand a little bit more about uh, this, this uh, execution, this activation with Purina. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, as you mentioned, what we really focus on is uh, interactive displays at retail that use computer vision and they detect which products you touch at the shelf. So it's like minority report. The moment you touch a product, it wakes up and starts telling you about the product. And some people call, you know, this kind of digital signage. Uh, I hate digital signage as a word. That's just like, as a term because like digital signage to me is like the banner ad of in-store retail, right? It's like blinky text saying, maybe it's Maybelline, maybe it's Maybelline. Yeah, you're shopping over here, but maybe I could catch your attention about this promotion or this deal. And, you know, I think that really when we look at the future of digital and the tools that have been most successful and really have dri dri driven engagement in store, it, it, there's things that are much more contextual to the shopper journey. And so this notion of merging both the physical activity when people pick up or touch a product with the digital content they need at that time, I think is incredibly powerful. Um, and so, you know, to me, Purina is a real thought leader here. What's exciting to me is we kind of, and you've seen this because we've known each other for you know, years, right? Where we got started with like Joe Malone and luxury retail, where you pick up a fragrance and it animates into honeysuckle and lemon and, you know, really kind of this augmented reality, mixed reality kind of experience that was considered very luxury, right? Um, and very kind of almost custom and agency. What excites me most about this is that this is a proof point that these technologies are gonna be democratized throughout mass retail, whether it's big box like Targets and Walmarts, grocery stores like Meijer, um, you know, the best buys of the world or the Bed Bath and Beyonds. And so, uh, you know, like you said, this is 200 stores. This is the largest implementation of these kind of product aware displays in both grocery and pets. So it's pretty groundbreaking in what we're able to do uh, with scale and with the data that we can collect from that. Um, that's terrific. As uh, it'd be interesting to understand uh, how how you're using the data that kind of comes out of this case study as well. In terms yeah. of Purina, um, in case people not, don't know, we're selling uh, pet food, yes, and that's what's happening with the, in the display. Yes. Yeah. So Purina, Purina is one of the you know kind of oldest uh, you know pet products uh, company. They're they're under the Nestle umbrella, and. You know, as you know, the pet category is really crowded, right? There's so many different, there's, there's you know, just cat, cats and dogs, cat litter, foods, toys, health, vitamins, uh, snacks, treats. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot. Uh, and, uh, you know, Pierce, you have a dog, I believe. Uh, and, and, and so you know what it's like. I mean, it's like the size of these sections is, is, is really large. So it's very difficult for brands to stand out. Um, you know, among such competition and, you know, kind of such large departments. And at the same time, if you're a re retailer, like, you know, I think we've talked about this before, a dog makes a home, right? Like this is, this is, this is a member of your family. And so this is a real trip driver. Uh, it's a high margin category that's important for people to win. And so people are looking at differentiated experiences to connect more meaningfully with shoppers. Super interesting. Yeah. My, my dog, uh, my dog's been away for a while, so um, I know uh, with my mother-in-law, unfortunately. So uh, yeah, I, I I can only imagine when your kids get back and see the dog for the first time in months at like what that reunion is going to be like. It's like those moments of joy between family members and and the products that we buy to bring that joy to our pets, to bring like their health, and and that's one of the things that that Purina was really trying to to kind of stand out for is like take a 28-day challenge of try Purina products. 
why are our ingredients differentiated from the other products on the shelf? And like do this 28 day challenge and see how much more energy and healthy your, 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 your dog or cat is. And so they have a bunch of tools that they need to promote, but you know, you're not gonna be able to do that with four point prints on the back of a, of, of, of a package. And so yeah. they need something more powerful, more engaging, uh, and also can convert people from in-store to online using mobile. And so that's what they've done. I, I have a video. Would you like to kind of see to, what it looks like? Let's walk through the, let's walk through the experience and be keen to see. Great. So this is what a pet aisle looks like, right? Uh, look at all the different products, all the different competing attention, free, you've got promotions, you've got stickers and pricing, you've got toys, you've got all these different things. And so even at a grocery store, the pet section is quite large. And so how do you stand out here? I mean, you can put wolves uh, on, on, on print, but with digital, you can create things that are dynamic. You can help people either go through the screen or when somebody just picks up a product like Puppy Chow, immediately the information comes up. And we know what consumers want because we've studied this online. They want information, they want related products, they want ratings and reviews, they want videos. So you can see at each point, you can understand, you know, this is puppy chow, wet food. What are the other things that go with it? Um, uh, there are videos about it. And so you kind of create this engagement. We see typically people spending up to a minute, a minute and a half with these products. So there's real consumption here. Um, and so this kind of com you know, com uh, completes kind of both the digital, the best of digital and physical shopping where you can see the products and also get all the information. And you know, you can go through the screen first, you can compare products, you can do all these things that we expect to be able to do online, but now do that in store. Um, and we talk about like product discovery being like, you know, uh, best in store, but it's amazing that we don't have all these tools that we need uh, in store. And so that's what we're really trying to do is to bring these same digital tools that we have online uh, into store so that you get the serendipity of product discovery. We forget that you know 85% of transactions still occur in store, even in a, in a post COVID world. And how do we make those kind of, like you, you, we talked about being digital signage. I think of it as really as a digital engagement platform. Yeah. So, and let's, let's, let's step through, uh, through some of those aspects. Okay. So the shoppers in aisle, uh, they um, obviously there's a lot of different products I know. Uh, even as a pet owner, you know, you still are confused about what, what to offer. And so there's a confusion there and there's always something new. And so you, uh, there's always a new ingredient or something. And so you have a display and you pick up the products. Um, and so how, what, what, what happens when I pick up uh, one of those bags? Yeah, so you're picking up a product to look at it. Immediately the screen, you know, so we use computer vision, the, 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 the perch screen and system knows which product you have in your hand and just says, okay, great. It's the puppy chow wet food or it's the dry food for mature dogs. And, and that's the thing, I think, you know, there are different formulas for brain focus for puppies for seven plus for three to five. It's really kind of exploded out. And so now it tells you like, well, what makes this the right uh, food for a seven year old plus dog? And it talks about digestion and brain health and joint health and, and some of the things that are really important to a dog, you know, that's more mature. And it brings in videos, it brings in ratings and reviews. It says, here are some related products you may want to look at, because like, you're probably looking at dry food and wet food. Well, what's the wet food that goes with this dry food, right? You can start putting that all together and, and really helping a shopper connect with the brand and also connect and have confidence in the products that they're selecting in store. Yeah. And then um, one other thing that we didn't show in the video is also we're using QR codes. So, you know, you can get more information also on your mobile device and control that experience. So if you're a retailer like Meyer, right, you don't want somebody to go to Amazon and do a, you know, some research there because you might lose the sale or Chewy or somebody else, right? You want to be able to provide all that data and you may, you know, focus them on your loyalty club or, uh, you know, see that there's couponing. And, and also because, I'm in store and I scan the QR code, you've now cookied me, right? So you've now started gathering data as Trevor Sumner is somebody who goes into Meyer to buy pet food. And now you've got a cookie so you can retarget me about pet products. You may know, like I've got a mature dog at seven years old, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, I think that's fascinating. Helping brands and consumer good companies be able to interact with 
in retail and create some sort of feedback loop it seems to be very i think i mean it's a it's the holy grail in some ways you know because there's there's always such a blockage with, the, with these companies where you kind of give the product to the retailers and who knows what's going to happen you do some market research at the other end to to find out what happens um yeah, so, yeah. and i think i think that's really interesting that's a great point around data it's like if you think about it brands maybe have some iri or uh, Nielsen data about how many people they think go into a Meyer store and they might get sales on the outside, you know, and, and, and maybe not even by store. And basically where 85% of transactions occur in store, it's a complete black box. We have yeah. no idea what people are doing. I think about it as like online, I, I can click on products. People are clicking on your products in store and it's a complete black box. Yeah. And so what we're trying to help brands discover is what are people clicking on? What content actually influences their shopper journey because we can detect those clicks, those pickups and product pickups. And, and the data is exciting. In fact, you know, that's actually something I, I wanted to also show if, if, that, if that makes sense. Um, because, you know, we talk about, you know, the store, right? You know, and, and online, we talk about social media and Facebook and Instagram advertising. There are, you know, and Doug Stevens pointed this out in his book, Reengineering Retail, there are 10 times as many people or 100 times more people in store than on your you know, Facebook followers, your Instagram followers, right? So what happens when you can start collecting that data? I think one of the reasons, you know, it, one of the questions I asked coming to Perch was, why is it that only 1% of digital media spend happens where 85% of transactions occur? There's a complete imbalance. And I think it's data, right? It's not really having visibility into what works. So I'm gonna share with you just some quick kind of ideas of the types of data that you can get out of out of perch and, and technologies like this and so this is an example of our perch dashboard it's all in real time you can see it's up to date it's june 22nd i just ran this and you can this is our snapshot like just looking at the last 30 days and you can see that purina's engaged with 69,000, what's called 70,000 shoppers right and so now you can you can see the total number of interactions and and, and, and actually look at this now on a cost per click basis like previously People are like, oh, I think you know, 10,000 people walked in store, maybe 2,000 people saw it, and here's the effective CPM. Hopefully that's a good thing, right? Like, like it's total, like if, if you measured online campaigns by CPMs, you would be laughed at. And now you can start looking at CPAs, CPCs. You can even look at, you know, kind of, it, this is kind of our um, more in kind of deeper engagement. We can look at how that's trending. We can look at the screen touches versus pickups. We can see what, actual products and what content actually converts people from pickup to screen. So now we can look at like, hey, what is it about dry dog food, true instinct that converts people better in these top three than let's say, you know, eight, nine, and 10. Is this yeah. content that we can improve? And, and, and you can see that because you see how people pick up products and then how well they convert to screen. Mm -hmm. um, so like all of this data, you can look at most popular products by pickup, so you can see the planogram in real time, which is fascinating. So, uh, Pierce, I'm putting you on the spot. So sorry if uh, if I if I'm if I didn't I didn't I didn't tell you I was going to ask you this, but like you you you've dealt with some people who design planograms, right? There's one piece of advice I always hear, like the same that the most common uh, the most common for where where do you put the best products? Do you, what, what do you know what it is? Have you heard eye level is buy level? Oh, so sure, eye level, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's like the number one axiom that your eye level on the shelf is the most important place for your pro your best performing product. Yeah. Exactly. Is that they true? Sell. They sell. They sell the eye level. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we've all heard it. Yeah. Is it true? Uh, yes, it is because that's what we've been told. Okay. Exactly. So I, I think. One of my favorite quotes is, in God we trust, all others must bring data, right? Yeah. So we can look at the most popular products by pickup and let's yeah. map it to the planogram. Yeah. Let's, let's see what we see here. So this is what the planogram looks like, right? Yeah. You've got five products in the top, three rows, right? Yeah. And so we're looking at the top shelf and it's true. The top shelf does drive 27% more pickups yeah. and being on the bottom shelf, 24% less pickups. But here's the fascinating thing. The edges are more valuable than the top shelf. So if you look at it, the, the left side, right, has 47% yeah. 
more pickups. So it's better to be on the left side than the top shelf. And the right side is wow. also similarly great. So, so you'd rather be in the middle left than in the center top. Does that make sense? That's for to totally fascinating insights. No one's like look, give, looking straight on. It, re it reminds me how I criticize my children for not looking in people's eyes. They're always looking to the left or right. Maybe, the, maybe that's human behavior. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, we talk about the paradox of choice, right? Like if you're right in the middle here, right? Like even being in the middle shelf or right. center is worse than being in the middle on the bottom because you're like just in the middle of all the products, you're kind of getting lost aesthetically, right? And so, you know, what we're seeing all of a sudden is, yes, eye level is a bit by level, but hey, on an end cap, we really should be looking at the edges. Like, is this the product that you wanna promote on the left side here? Is, it, is, it, is this the high margin one? Is this the strategically important one? You know, now we can say, okay, let's like, and this is, you know, kind of um, initial data, right? And it's, it could be skewed by the fact that these products potentially are the best sellers. The, the answer is they're not, but you can now look at this data, do things like A-B testing. You can test multiple planograms. And you can get all of that stuff in real time. And so now, like, if you're looking at this and you're a Purina or you're a Johnson & Johnson or anybody else, right, now you've got a test bed to test your planograms across your entire store fleet, whether it's, you know, perch activated or not. And so we're changing the way people think about merchandising, pricing, which content converts, all of those type of things. And it's all powered, you know, by perch cloud data and looking at the top content, the top products, your top stores, your top locations, um, and seeing that stuff in real time. And, you know, being able to sort and figure out, you know, if you have different stores of different types, uh, you know, bigger stores, smaller format stores, what is the effect on interactions? We've seen data that show that people interact more with digital on the West Coast rather than the East Coast. So, you know, it's, it's really fascinating. Again, the store has been this black box and now we're shining a light in it. And all these things around planogram design and you know, things that we've assumed to be true, we can now question and come to the table with data. Well, it sounds like it's a great foundation to kind of future work and the future of retail and the future of the store experience. Uh, Trevor Summer, CEO of Perch, I really appreciate your time and taking us through the Perina case study today and the work that uh, Perch does. And um, I wish you, wish you the best of luck with the, with the rollout. Thank you, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, uh, looking forward to uh, you coming back stateside, reconnecting with your dog and hopefully uh, bringing some Purina products into their lives for a healthy and happy uh, pooch. Sounds like I'll have to do that. Thank you. Yeah.